In this video, we'll show you how to produce whole transcriptome analysis or WTA libraries using our updated BD Rhapsody WTA Amplification Kit protocol. Please note that unlike our other workflows, our WTA protocol has a few unique steps. We'll be starting with the exonuclease treated beads from the cDNA protocol. If you wish to subsample for future use, you can calculate the volume of beads to remove as a proportion of the cells captured. In our example, we previously captured 10,000 cells, but only want to process 5,000 or 50% of them. To do this, resuspend the beads and take 100 microliters of the 200 microliters in the tube. The remaining beads can be stored at 4 degrees Celsius for up to three months. The volume of beads we decided to proceed with in the previous step are then denatured at 95 degrees Celsius for five minutes. While the beads are incubating, prepare the random primer mix by combining the extension buffer, randomers, and water by pipette mixing. After incubation is complete, briefly spin the tube, then place it on a magnet until the beads bind to the side of the wall. If you used ABSeq or sample tag antibodies during the experiment, save the supernatant for future processing. If no antibodies were used, like in this example, the supernatant can be discarded. Next, remove the tube from the magnet and resuspend the beads using 87 microliters of random priming mix that we previously made. Now, incubate this reaction mix in a specific three-step order and prepare the extension enzyme mix while the incubation takes place. To incubate the reaction mix, place the tube in the heat block at 95 degrees Celsius for five minutes without shaking. Next, use the thermo mixer for five minutes at 1200 RPM and 37 degrees Celsius. Finally, use the thermo mixer for five minutes at 1200 RPM and 25 degrees Celsius. During the incubation, prepare the extension enzyme mix by combining DNTPs, the RT-PCR enhancer, and the WTA extension enzyme together. Pipette mix and place on ice until needed. After the final incubation step, briefly centrifuge the tube while keeping it at room temperature. Then, take the tube and pipette 13 microliters of the enzyme mix for a total volume of 100 microliters. Keep this tube at room temperature until you are ready for the next step. In the next step, slowly raise the temperature of the reaction mix to produce a copy of the cDNA covalently linked to the bead. Before starting, make sure to set the ramp rates on your thermomixer at the maximal and set the time mode to temperature control. Incubate this reaction mix using four specific steps, which will all include shaking at 1200 RPM for all the steps. 25 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes, followed by 37 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes, then 45 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes, and finally 55 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. This program takes approximately an hour to finish. If applicable during this time, you may also begin ABSEQ and sample tag amplification. After the program on the thermomixer has completed, place the tube with beads on a magnet for two minutes and discard the supernatant. Next, Remove the tube from the magnet and resuspend the beads with 205 microliters of elution buffer. Make sure to be careful to reduce the amount of bead suspension that is stuck on the walls of the tube or the tube cap. Place the resuspended beads on a 95 degrees Celsius heat block and incubate for five minutes. This will denature the randomly primed and extended or RPE products from the beads while leaving the cDNA covalently bound to the beads. The beads will settle during the step, and that is perfectly normal. Next, briefly shake the tube on a thermomixer set at any temperature at 1200 RPM for 10 seconds to resuspend the settled beads. Then, place the tube on a magnet and wait 30 seconds for the beads to bind. Immediately transfer 200 microliters of the supernatant containing the RPE products into a newly labeled 1.5 milliliter DNA low bind tube and store on ice. Remove the tube containing the beads from the magnet and perform an additional RPE reaction identical to the first. The products from each RPE reaction will be combined for a total volume of 400 microliters and purified with Ampure XP beads. The beads remaining after collecting the RPE products 
from the second RPE reaction can be resuspended in cooled bead resuspension buffer and stored at 4 degrees Celsius for up to three months. After ampere purification of the combined RPE products, the next step is RPE PCR. Make a master mix by combining the Universal Oligo, WTA Amplification Primer, and PCR Master Mix together. Mix 40 microliters of purified RPE product with 80 microliters of Master Mix and split into two 60 microliter reactions in PCR tubes. Place the reactions on a thermocycler. The number of cycles is dependent on the number of cells being processed. Guidelines for cycle numbers can be found in our protocols, and for our example of 5,000 cells, we will use 13 cycles. Once the program is finished, combine the two RPE-PCR reactions and purify with an Ampere bead cleanup. After purification, run the RPE-PCR products on a bioanalyzer to assess the size of the fragments, and with a qubit to assess the concentration. We expect the RPE products to be in the range of 200 to 2,000 base pairs with a concentration of 0.5 to 10 nanograms per microliter. Additionally, we'll measure the concentration on the bioanalyzer trace from 150 to 600 base pairs and record the nanomolarity. With successful QC, we can proceed to generating sequencing libraries from the RPE amplified products. First, Aliquot and dilute some of the RPE amplified product to 2 nanomolar in at least 10 microliters if it is higher than 2 nanomolar. Then, make the WTA PCR master mix by combining the library forward primer, one of the four library reverse primers, water, and PCR master mix. Pipette mix and add 40 microliters to a PCR tube. Then add in the 10 microliters of the diluted RPE amplified product in pipette mix. Place this reaction on a thermocycler. The number of cycles will be dependent on the starting concentration of the RPE amplified product. Guidelines for cycle numbers can be found in our protocols. After the program is finished, purify the library with a double-sided Ampure cleanup. Once the purification is complete, run the WTA library on a bioanalyzer to assess the size of the fragments and with a qubit to assess the concentration. We expect the library to be in the range of 250 to 1,000 base pairs with a concentration greater than one nanogram per microliter. With successful QC, our library is now ready to be sequenced. If you're interested in learning how to dilute and pull libraries for sequencing, you can watch our video at bdbiosciences.com or scomix.bd.com. For troubleshooting or additional assistance for this protocol, check out our FAQ at scomix.bd.com, reach out to your local field application scientist, or contact the Multiomics Help Desk. Thanks for watching.